I love football. I, I cannot get enough of football. I, wa I watch it on every level. The emotional release. You know, whether it's an exciting play that gets you all jacked up and juiced, or whether it's the fact that you're able to pour everything you have. Whatever frustration you had that week, you can put into that first kickoff coverage, that first block that you have, whatever it might be. And, and I couldn't think of anything better to do uh, to fill that void that, that you have as a football player than, than to get into coaching. You get a chance to release a lot of emotion that you otherwise have no place to release. There's nothing else like that. Again, the relationships you build and, and the, thing, the people you're around and, and watching the guys compete, um, not just on the football field, but in life after they get done playing. Uh, it's, it's just a, an amazing game. And don't forget to check out and order your copy of our latest book, Stiff Arming Football Myths. You can find this available in both paperback and PDF form on our website at footballgameplan.com slash books. There is nothing that needs to be said about the quality of Andrew Luck's play. The four-year vet has gotten better each and every season. Luck had his best season statistically last year, throwing for over 4,700 yards, 40 touchdowns, and a passer rating of 96.5. What you would like to see him become better at doing is protecting the football. Now, other than that, he should have the Colts in contention as long as he's under center. And veteran Matt Hasselbeck returns as the number two guy this season. Here is where the Colts have had problems the last three seasons and they attacked this offseason trying to find a solution for it. They signed future Hall of Famer Frank Gore via free agency and Gore is coming off yet another 1,000 yard season giving him over 11,000 yards for his career. He says he has a lot more left to gain and that'll be music to the ears of Andrew Luck. Now they still have holdovers in Boom Heron, Vic Ballard and Zerlon Tipton and in the draft they took the bowling ball of a back and Josh Robinson out of Mississippi State, but in my opinion, the steal is undrafted free agent Tyler Varga out of Yale. The 5'10", 220-pound runner is an ideal fit for Pep Hamilton's offense and is definitely one to keep an eye on. This is the best core of receiving options in the division. The Colts are stacked with talent, and they sign yet another future Hall of Famer in Andre Johnson away from the Houston Texans and Johnson is a consummate pro and replaces yet another future Hall of Famer in Reggie Wayne and is also playing with the best quarterback of his career. T.Y. Hilton once again led the team in receiving posting back-to-back 1,000 -back yard seasons. Always the big play threat he should once again benefit from an excellent option playing opposite of him. Should be a nice battle for the number three role as second year player Dante Moncrief Rookie Philip Dorsett out of Miami and free agent signing Deron Carter from the Montreal Alouettes vie for that spot. And honestly, it may fall in line just like that during the season. But all three guys are talented and bring something unique to the table. They'll all see playing time, in my opinion. Both Griff Whalen and Vincent Brown are valuable vets to have on the roster. And I think two practice squad options that are worth mentioning are Tyler Rutenbeck out of Dubuque and Ezel Ruffin out of San Diego State, who was outstanding during the East-West Shrine game practices. Teams have trouble finding one good tight end, and the Colts have three in Dwayne Allen, Kobe Fleener, and Jack Doyle. All three are versatile enough to be moved around the formation. In my opinion, Allen is the best of the bunch. Fleener came on strong in the latter part of the season, and Doyle plays more of the H-back role for this offense. The offensive line, I believe, is a solid one for Indy. You can't have this much success that they've enjoyed over the last three seasons if this unit wasn't getting the job done. The key will be making sure this group stays together for a full 16 games. Anthony Costanzo has been a solid and steady performer since his arrival. Second-year man Jake Muhort, who's versatile enough to play guard, will replace Gosha Cherilis at right tackle, and Muhort performed well as a rookie when he started inside at guard. Now, it could be an interesting battle at center with both Khalid Holmes and Jonathan Harrison logging starts last year. Harrison more than held his own. Either way, I think it bolsters the depth on the inside. And Donald Thomas, if he can stay healthy, looks to man the other guard spot. If he can't, both Hugh Thornton and former CFL first-round pick Ben Heenan will jockey for that role. Now, Heenan's biggest question while at the East-West Shrine game back in 2012 was his strength versus the competition. Now, he went up to the CFL, became an all-star, and looks to be ready for the physical demands of the NFL. Rookie Denzel Good out of Mars Hill, David Arkin out of Missouri State, and Matt Hill out of Bellhaven, and also Ulrich John are some young developmental prospects that you want to keep an eye on. For me, 
I think the biggest thing that football taught me was how to overcome adversity. At some point in your life, you're going to have some tough times. You have to have that next play mentality. That cohesiveness and that working together, that's really something special that you can't get in a lot of other areas. When you practice that and you live that in other phases of your life, it, it, it becomes second nature because all you know how to do is fight. But it's not an easy game. If it were easy, everyone would do it. You start to appreciate the, the smaller contributions that people make. You don't just look at the big one because you knew it took six or seven other guys who are unsung. And, uh, you know, you, you can't take shortcuts and be successful. Doing what they do to make it possible for the guy getting the press clippings or whatever it might be. In this game, whether it's as a coach or a player. So, um, I would certainly say that, um, you know, you definitely got uh, a very quick lesson in how to overcome adversity playing football. I like this group for Indianapolis, and if Arthur Jones can shake the injury bug that plagued him last season, he'll do just fine at one defensive end spot. The club would like for nose tackle Josh Chapman to take that next step and elevate his game, but in my opinion, I think Zach Kerr, with that versatility, should be the starter at nose, but a guy with his talent will find his way on the field regardless. A good free agent signing in Kendall Langford, who will start at the other defensive end spot. Langford was a solid contributor with the Rams. Good depth with Montari Hughes and Kelsey Quarles. Both were really productive in rotation last season. Rookie Henry Anderson out of Stanford was drafted in the third round, and once he started to play with better pad level, he has good functional strength to be effective. There's a lot of experience here for Indianapolis. Dequell Jackson, Trent Cole, and Robert Mathis all have 10-plus seasons in the NFL. Outside linebacker Eric Walden is not that far behind with eight. All four guys are starters, and Mathis and Cole may have to split starts this year because Mathis will be returning from an injury. Now, the other starter is inside linebacker Jarrell Freeman, who finished second on the team in tackles with 126, and the Colts got really strong play from this group last year. Now, there's a ton of youthful depth here as well. Both Beyond Warner and Jonathan Newsom made some big strides toward the latter part of the season in their game, so Indy has their future pass rushers progressing nicely. I also think once Nate Irving gets to 100%, He'll surprise as I'm a big fan of how he plays the linebacker position. Both Hanak Mwamba and Carlos Fields, I believe, are hitting gems on the roster that I have to make special team impacts. And I know they drafted Amarlo Herrera in the sixth round out of Georgia, but Mwamba and Fields, in my opinion, are much better backers. Keep an eye on rookie Zach Hodges out of Harvard as well. He's a very good athlete in need of grooming, and I think he landed in a great spot for that. The Colts got very good play last year from the corners. Vontae Davis played all pro caliber football last season, finishing second on the squad with four interceptions. He and fifth-year vet Greg Toller complement each other very well. Darius Butler also played well as a nickel guy in solid depth with Sheldon Price and two rookies in Dewan Smith out of Florida Atlantic and undrafted free agent Donald Seliscar out of Western Michigan. Smith is very active with good instincts, and Seliscar has the ball skills and the ability to play both corner and safety. Speaking of the safety spot, Mike Adams is coming off a Pro Bowl season after leading Indianapolis in interceptions with five. At free safety, I like Dwight Lowry, and I think he has that ability to match up versus receivers and tight ends. He'll have to hold off rookie Clayton Gathers out of Central Florida, who I think is more of a combo guy in the mold of Stevie Brown of the Houston Texans. I would imagine a lot of creative looks personnel-wise coming from defensive coordinator Greg Minuski this season. I'm excited about the Colts' special teams this year. Their kicking game is top-notch with kicker Adam Vinatieri and punter Pat McAfee. Both are some of the best at their position. The return game, which was really good from a kickoff return perspective, could be much more explosive this season with rookie Philip Dorsett out of Miami. He would likely handle both kickoff return and punt return duties. And from a coverage standpoint, with the talent that they have at linebacker and defensive back, they'll probably end up as the best in the division. I have the Colts finishing first in the AFC South with the additions made in the backfield. An already strong team got even stronger. Indy, in my opinion, is equipped to make an even deeper run than the AFC Championship run they made last season. And I also want to give a huge shout-out to Colt Fan Forums for always showing football game plan support.